Have you ever seen a crazy derivative problem like this where you're like, uh, what do I do here? Well, today you've become a numbered ninja who's subscribed to my channel. So welcome to the dojo. Let's get started. <sighs> when you have this problem, the sine of the sine of the sine of X, you've got a crazy number of function compositions happening here. So if you remember with composition of functions, when you want to take its derivative, you normally would use the chain rule. And if you don't remember it, that's all right. I've got another video you can watch. But essentially, you start by taking the derivative of the outer function and what it takes on the inside, you call it something simpler like u. And then you multiply that result by the derivative of that inside function in terms of x originally. So for this problem, though, it looks like it's a little bit more difficult because we don't have just one composition happening here. We've got f of g of h of x, if I were to give a separate letter for each thing. And this is where, when you have a crazy composition like this, I think of it as peeling the layers of an onion, where as I go deeper one layer at a time, for each time I do that, I'm going to just keep repeating the chain rule because after each chain rule application, it just becomes simpler to work with because now you're in lower layers. And we're going to do that here. So we're going to start with this upper layer, because if you look at the original problem, how much easier would this be where instead of the sine of the sine of the sine of something, we just had the sine of something like a variable. And we're going to do just that. So everything to the right of this leftmost sine operator that we see here, we're just going to call it u. So we're going to let g of x be all of that, which is sine of sine of x being assigned to a new variable called u, and then this becomes a much simpler sine of u problem. So with the chain rule, we would then take the derivative with respect to u of sine of u, and then not forgetting the fact that we must multiply that result by the derivative with respect to x of all that stuff on the inside that we assign to g of x, which is sine of sine of x. And already you can tell here that looking at that right derivative of g, it's one layer smaller, right? Because instead of f of g of h of x, we only have two signs that are remaining. So each time we apply the chain rule here, we're just getting closer and closer to the final answer. So if you do the derivative of sine of u with respect to u, you'll get cosine of u. That one's pretty simple. And then when we multiply that by the derivative with respect to x of sine of sine of x, notice that once again on that right-hand side, we'll need to assign the inner function sine of x to, again, a variable called g. Now, remember, though, too, on the left-hand side here, we still have a u variable. So you want to make sure that you don't leave u in there and you put everything back in terms of x because that's what we were given in the original problem. So I'm going to do just that. I'm going to just basically substitute back in sine of sine of x for u, giving me the cosine of the sine of sine of x. Multiply by this derivative of sine of sine of x, where for that we need to again apply the chain rule. So after assigning the inner function sine of x to g of x, I'm going to once again call that some variable u. And that's okay here because normally if you leave variables in the equation, you want to give this a new letter like w or z. But because on the left hand side here, I no longer have a u and I put everything back in terms of x, it's okay here to just rename or reuse the same letter. So simplifying this further, you'll get cosine of sine of sine of x times cosine of u, because remember, for the chain rule here, we start by the derivative of the outer function, which is now a sine of u problem once again, times the derivative of what we called u, which is sine of x, giving you a result, which is cosine of x. And just like before, after peeling away this layer, you want to make sure that your final answer has no u left in there.